So let's summarize now commit chains. So we'll be looking at only these three commit chains um, while there are more, but um, I, I encourage you to look, for example, into rollup specifically. They're quite interested. Some might say these are actually not off-chain protocols. Some say these are off-chain protocols. So it's a bit uh, unclear how they're categorized, but they certainly do help scale a blockchain. So NoCast. Uh, NoCast allows basically to en encode user balances in off-chain ledger. So you have fungible payments. Um, the disadvantage is that you have slower delayed finality. Um, you have quite a lightweight client. Uh, the lightweight clients, they, the clients don't have to have much data. You get an instant finality support if you collateralized um, an insurance pool, which is expensive. Um, and you can perform off-chain swaps, atomic off-chain swaps. Uh, there's a, a text specification that, that allows that. The problem is that uh, users have to come online regularly, right? They need, they need to actually actively monitor the blockchain and perform a challenge if there's something going wrong. But this is, this is a traditional assumption in payment channels, at least. So for Noka ZKP, uh, there's a trusted setup, but trusted setups can be performed in a decentralized way. Nowadays, um, you can, for example, look at Tornado Cash. Um, and um, so the advantage of NOCA CKP is that users without incoming transactions, they can actually stay offline because they have nothing to verify. And there's a non-interactive challenge, which is uh, quite beneficial. There's Plasma Cash, a very famous Plasma variant. It represents a coin as a serial number. Um, it doesn't support fungible payments, but it um, but it allows for rapid delayed finality, which is great. But you can can payments can be quite fast without uh, without collateral, as far as I understand. Um, the disadvantage is that the users have to verify a large amount of historical data, and you don't have any instant finality support. It may, might be interesting to add this. Um, to my knowledge, there's no feasibility to perform swaps. Um, and you also need to regular, uh, reg be regular online to, to watch uh, malicious withdrawals. Uh -huh. So what are the good and the bad and ugly of commit chains? Well, overall, uh, recipients can be offline to receive a transaction, which is a feature that's the advantage over payment channels. There's no decentralization. That's probably one of the biggest drawbacks, right? You have the central operator and it's unclear how to jump from one operator to the other without using, for example, trusted execution environments. Um, onboarding is, is quite instant and free, which is, which is amazing for such a technology. And uh, however, they have limited censorship resistance. So the operator can censor your transactions. So if you have some ideas on how to prevent this, um, yeah, um, please, please uh, try to write this down. This is, uh, this is it's an ongoing research question. Um, you don't need collateral for delayed finality, so you can compromise finality uh, to operate a, a hub or like an, like an operator in a, in a cheaper way. Um, but there are data availability challenges, so your operator needs to respond to you, right? If you want to have, um, if you want to receive your partial Merkle tree, uh, of, of the commitment of the checkpoint, then the operator needs to be available. If the operator does not provide this data, you need to challenge the operator. And um, this can this can result into, um, into a difficult game between the operator and the users of the blockchain, where the operator can withheld, withhold data from other users, uh, from, from, from a set of users, and they all have to challenge the operator then. And if some don't challenge, then the operator might be able to modify maliciously a, a user balance. So data availability challenges are certainly a, probably one of the biggest challenges of commit chains. So you might ask, I mean, what if we have a blockchain that scales significantly with respect to latency and volume? Do we still need second layer solutions? Why do we talk about this at all? Well, um, a second factor and location verification is something that you often have nowadays in your banking wallets, such as Revolut. And it would be interesting to add that this operator here, he can verify, do you really want to spend these coins, right? You can get notified and you can act upon misbehavior. So 
like even if if second layer solutions, I mean, let's say, let's say even you don't need them because they they scale sufficiently, you can get this additional security feature potentially, right? I I'm I'm a, I am aware that the security model of an off-chain transfer is not the same as an on-chain transfer, and it's safer to have on-chain coins than off-chain coins, um, but that's a possibility. So regarding privacy, so you can have off-chain transactions that are not broadcast, right? And this may increase privacy, but it's not always so clear to what degree privacy is improved. Um, there are some excellent research works on Lightning that I can recommend you to look up. And obviously in a commit chain, privacy is lost to the central commit chain operator. 